It's Lynn Liaz, March 19th, 2014. And today in my article on Before It's News and in this video, I'm going to show you a comparison between an evil leader represented by Barack Hussein Obama in the United States of America and its nation, blessing or curse, and a leader who may not be perfect, but by far has more moral and biblical standards than the evil leader. And that leader is going to be represented by Vladimir Putin, the president of the Soviet Union. Now, I want to state first, and I want to be clear about this. I am not saying that by my standards, uh, Vladimir Putin um, is a Christian. Okay, not by my standards. Now, we know better than to judge people's hearts because only God knows the heart of man. But I want to be clear about that, nor am I praising Vladimir Putin or stating that he is a wonderful man or a totally godly man. I'm not saying any of that. My message today is to merely draw a comparison, biblically speaking, and I want to say some things about the Holy Spirit and God's judgment. So I want to be clear about that. Furthermore, um, if we look at it biblically in the Old Testament, in the book of Kings, I believe it was the book of Kings, what had happened was there would be evil leaders and there would be leaders that weren't totally perfect, but more righteous than the evil leaders. And those leaders were blessed more by God than the totally evil leaders. Like there may have been a, a king who took down a lot of the Asherah poles, but not all of them. Therefore, his kingdom and his people was blessed more by God, but not totally, than the king who was totally evil and left up more Asherah poles than the other. And that is truly what I'm trying to show you. Again, I'm not trying to say that Vladimir Putin, um, by my standards, is a Christian, and I'm not trying to um, praise him or anything like that. I am making a comparison, and there are some things that Vladimir, Vladimir Putin deserves um, to have recognition for in comparison to the leader that we have been given. Now, another thing I want to add is that God is the one in control of all things. Uh, President Obama has been made a leader of the United States of America by God because God says that he has chosen the evil for the day of evil or made evil for the day of evil, rather. And I believe that God wants to pour out his spirit upon the United States of America. But in order to do that, he has to bring judgment. And the reason he brings judgment is to bring about repentance because there needs to be a great soul harvest. There needs to be a great revival because as it stands right now, there are literally thousands and thousands, millions of people across the world who, if they died today, would go to hell. And God wants to cause a great soul harvest and that many can be saved and come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior so that they will not spend eternity in hell. Now, before I do anything, I'm going to begin by reading a passage out of 2 Kings. It's chapter 17, beginning with verse 7. And the title of it is, Why Israel Fell? Because I think it pertains to us in the United States of America, we can look at that scripturally in comparison to ourselves and what is going to happen to us because we have turned away from God. We have renounced God. We have stopped the flow of the Holy Spirit. We have said, I don't want you to God as a nation. And we have this evil leader who represents everything. I mean, a hundred percent, everything that the Bible goes against. He purposely stands for and rubs it in God's face. And that is a big time no-no. So I'm going to read this to you before I start. This disaster happened because the people of Israel had sinned against the Lord, their God, 
who had brought them out of the land of Egypt from the power of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And because they had worshipped other gods, they had lived according to the customs of the nations that the Lord had dispossessed before the Israelites and the customs the kings of Israel had introduced. The Israelites secretly did what was not right against the Lord their God. They built high places in all their towns from watchtowers to fortified cities. They set up for themselves sacred pillars and Asherah poles on every high hill and under every green tree. They burned incense on all the high places just like those nations that the Lord had driven out before them. They did evil things provoking the Lord. They served idols, although the Lord had told them, you must not do this. Still the Lord warned Israel and Judah through every prophet and every seer, saying, Turn from your evil ways and keep my commands and statutes according to all the law I commanded your ancestors and sent to you through my servants and prophets. And I want to pause there to reflect on that. God is sending us many prophets, warning us to turn from sin and to obey the Lord. Sadly, and it's the worst amongst uh, people who proclaim to be Christians, the prophets are being persecuted verbally by the Christians. For example, I can't tell you how many Christian Facebook groups I have been kicked out of and banned from for my posts. And many of those posts, they didn't even bother to read, but the ones that they kicked me out for were about salvation and repentance. People don't want to hear this. People want the sugar-coated truth. They only want to hear the good things that tickle their ears. And the Bible specifically mentions that about people will be given to the ear-tickling message. They want to stay in their safe haven of corrupt Christianity the type of Christianity that does not bring repentance, the type of Christianity that does not cause conviction in the hearts of man. Rather, it's the type of Christianity that just makes you feel good and you don't have to worry about anything that you're doing. You don't have to give anything up. And that is the type of Christian religion that dominates the United States of America and a big part of the reason for the political correctness that is in the body of Christ and a good part of the reason why the morals that we used to stand firmly upon have crumbled and fallen beneath our feet. This very attitude of watered down, wishy-washy, sugar-coated Christianity. Christianity, or rather when you become a Christian, it is not truth if you hear people tell you Oh, it's going to be great. It's not. When you give your life to Jesus Christ, your life becomes more difficult because you have to go against everything that the world says is good. You have to go against the flesh. We are doomed right now in a body of flesh, but thank God for Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, that when we confess that he is the Messiah and call upon him as our Savior, we are no longer doomed to that body of flesh. Currently, we're stuck living in it, but he has given us the Holy Spirit to have power over the flesh. Now, to have that power over the flesh, we have to rebuke the desires of the flesh. We have to rebuke what the world wants us to do and follow Jesus and him alone. Jesus was not some wishy-washy um, minister that came to witness to us. He is God in the flesh. He is the son of God. He is part of the Holy Trinity. They are all one, but yet separate. And it's hard for our, our minds to understand. So Jesus was not this wishy-washy, um, effeminate man. Okay. He was and is part of God. So we have to understand that and understand his authority and once we understand that authority and we see the Bible as a whole, instead of just looking at the New Testament, mind you, many Christians want to cut the Revelation, the book of Revelation out of the New Testament. But when we look at the Bible as a whole living unit, as opposed to taking scriptures out of context, we can get the whole image of God's personality. The Old Testament, as I've stated before, 
shows us the God who does not, uh, the God who does not tolerate sin, the God of correction, the God of love made perfect in his correction and during times of tribulation, the angry God, the God who loves his children so much that he becomes very angry when his children live in sin and disobedience. Then in the New Testament, we see the forgiving side of God, the God who in his love forgives. Okay, the compassionate God, but all of these things are one whole thing. Okay, we can't take God and chop off part of his personality and just say, well, love, love, love. Yes, God is love, but we can't forget that his love is made perfect in his judgment. And when Jesus does return at the very end of the tribulation, it says in righteousness, he judges and makes war. So let's move forward. Next verse, which is verse 14. But they would not listen. And that's just like us. We are not listening. We're shunning the prophets. We're throwing them out. We're cursing them and rebuking them. Instead, they became obstinate like their ancestors who did not believe the Lord their God. They rejected his statutes and his covenant he had made with their ancestors and the decrees he had given them. They pursued worthless idols and became worthless themselves, following the surrounding nations the Lord had commanded them not to imitate. What idols are in your life? Is it the television set? Is it... Um, movies? Is it video games? Is it cigarettes or alcohol or some other sort of addiction? Is it sex addiction, lust, pornography? Um, what are the things you're making your idol? Is it work? You know, work is not bad, but we can make work our idol when we put it above God and God is always supposed to be first. So with God being first, nothing else can be an idol to us. Now, if the word of God, which clearly, if you read the whole Bible and study it, you will know in your own spirit that some of those TV programs that you call okay by God's standards are not okay. He says we are not to have any appearance whatsoever of the world. There are lots of nasty things that would appear innocent that are in a lot of the movies and television programs and video games that people are partaking in. You have to look at those things. I can only tell you that the majority of what is on television, God would not approve of. They abandoned all the commands of the Lord, their God. They made cast images for themselves, two calves and an Asherah pole. They worshiped the whole heavenly host and served Baal. So they worshiped the sky, which would be the sun, the moon, and the stars, and they served Baal. And I did a post recently on Baal. What Baals do you have in your life? You need to look at those things because you're going to be judged for those things. They made their sons and daughters pass through the fire and practice divination and interpreted omens. Today, we make our sons and daughters pass through the fire. Perry Stone has pointed out in some of his videos, and, and it's awesome the way he explains this, that basically when these people would do this, they had this furnace area where there was fire cut out in Baal's stomach area, and that is where they would place the infant or the child at would be in the belly of Baal to burn. So in the same sense, this same act is being performed by abortionists with women, but instead of fire, it's the fires of hell spiritually, but instead of physical fire, unborn babies are being murdered in the belly or the womb of their mothers. And this is a terrible, terrible thing. They devoted themselves to do what was evil in the Lord's sight and provoked him. Therefore, the Lord was very angry with Israel and he removed them from his presence. My friends, that is what the Lord is doing today in the United States of America. We have become such evil, evil people as a nation. He is removing his hand from us. 
And it's a frightening thing. That's why we're seeing more things happen today that are just mind blowing, treacherous, horrible things, unimaginable things, because God is removing his hand from this nation because of our leader and because we represent to other nations, which you'll see in an article I'm going to show you, other nations see us as a great whore. They truly do. The homosexuality, the abortion, the lust, the shameless uh, sex and sex acts, bestiality. Not that these things don't go on in other nations as well, but America is becoming the absolute most corrupt and sinful and godless nation. We are the epitome of Sodom and Gomorrah at its finest. We really are. And it's very sad. And I'm going to point all these things out to you here in a moment by making a comparison between our leaders, Obama and Putin. Only the tribe of Judah remained. Even Judah did not keep the commands of the Lord their God, but lived according to the customs Israel had introduced. So the Lord rejected all the descendants of Israel, afflicted them, and handed them over to plunderers until he had banished them from his presence. That's what's going on today. God's not happy with us. Don't think for one minute that God does not pour out his wrath at blatant, outright sin and disobedience. I am so tired and sick and I can understand the scripture now that says uh, it's in the book of Revelation where it says God would rather us be hot or cold but because we're neither cold nor hot and, and we're lukewarm, I means somewhere in the middle, just that liberalized, wishy-washy attitude, that God will vomit, literally barf or puke those people out of his mouth. Do you understand that? Cold would mean having no religion at all, but the lukewarm people make him so disgusted that he will puke them from his mouth. And I can understand that these Christian, so-called Christians that even come to my channel rebuking th me or saying things that are so unbiblical, it's not even funny. They make me literally want to vomit. They make me sick. It is disgusting the amount of liberalism and occult activity that has infiltrated into the body of Christ. So now let's look at Vladimir Putin. Here's an article that came out January 29th, 2014. And again, I'm just going to remind you for all my lovely fans that love to come and leave me um, pleasant comments about how much they hate me or, or they like to nitpick me. I'm just going to state once again here. I'm not saying that by my standards, uh, Putin is a Christian. I'm not saying that everything the man does is perfect, nor am I honoring him or praising him or anything of the sort, I am drawing a comparison that is your choice to come to the conclusion of what you want to think or what you want to feel about this. I'm just showing you a comparison. Again, Putin does not honor Israel. So that's one thing he has against him. Okay, we all know about that. Um, it was said that he had an affair. Well, that can't be proven. So I can't legitimately say, well, this man had an affair. I, I really don't know. And these things are irrelevant to my point that I'm trying to make. Again, I'm going back to the Bible. I believe it was in the book of Kings where there were leaders that were not perfect by any stretch, but they and their people were more blessed by God than the leaders who altogether shunned God for the most part and or completely those leaders and their people were not blessed by God and they suffered immensely. It says Putin, and he says, America is godless, has turned away from Christian values. Russian President Vladimir Putin condemned the West, including the United States, for eschewing Christian values and opting instead for a path of degradation. In his State of the Nation speech last month, now again, this is January, so last month, according to this article, would have been the following month, December of 2013. In his State of the Nation speech last month, Putin asserted that 
Many Euro-Atlantic countries have moved away from their roots, including Christian values. Policies are being pursued that place on the same level a multi-child family and a same-sex partnership, a faith in God, and a belief in Satan. Russia has adopted new laws that ban homosexual propaganda and criminalizes the insulting of religious sensibilities. Now here in the United States, we see the opposite happening. Anybody with Christian and or moral values are being persecuted while the people who are blaspheming God and standing for everything unbiblical are being praised and adored. And nobody seems to care or be bothered by this. And those of us who do are persecuted in our own ways. We're attacked by people on the internet. Um, we're, we're just literally being persecuted. Even ministers in their own churches preaching the truth are being persecuted for speaking the truth. The law of religious sensibilities was approved in the wake of a protest in Moscow's largest cathedral, by a female punk rock group, Pussy Riot. State-run television said the group's demonic protest was funded by some Americans. Doesn't surprise me there. Russia's newfound embrace of traditional values has prompted a rise in orthodox vigilantism. Extreme groups such as the Union of Orthodox Banner Bearers and ultra-conservative faction who adopted a slogan, Orthodoxy or Death. Are gaining prominence. It was not that long ago that the United States was accusing Russia for being a godless nation. On March 8th of, eight, of 1983, Ronald Reagan said this about Russia to an audience of evangelicals. Yes, let us pray for the salvation of all those who live in that totalitarian darkness. Pray they will discover the joy of knowing God but until they do, let us be aware that while they preach the supremacy of the state, declare its omnipotence over individual man, and predict its eventual domination of all peoples on the earth, they are the focus of evil in the modern world. Now, today we see the opposite. Now we are the great evil, we are the great horror, and they are on the rise, spiritually speaking. Um, there is a move of the Holy Spirit going on over in Russia right now as we speak. History supports the 40th president of the United States remarks. According to a 1995 Russian presidential committee report, Soviet authorities executed 200,000 clergy and believers from 1917 to 1937, many of them crucified, scalped, and otherwise tortured. Thousands of churches were destroyed and those that survived were turned into warehouses, garages, or museums of atheism. Moreover, another 500,000 religious figure, figures were persecuted and 40,000 churches destroyed in the period from 1922 to 1980, the report said. Half the country's mosques and more than half the synagogues were also destroyed. Clergymen were crucified on churches, holy gates, shot, scalped, and strangled, said Al Alexander Yak Yakovlev head of the Commission for the Rehabilitation of the Victims of Political Repression. I was especially shocked by accounts of priests turned into columns of ice in winter. Yakolev said it was total cruelty. Now we're seeing the complete opposite today with Vladimir Putin as the presidential leader of Russia. And here's an article from February of 2012, Vladimir, Vladimir Putin vows to defend Christianity worldwide. And he has held to his word. That's the thing. Look at Barack Obama and all of his vows. Not one of them. The only thing he has done is created a big, huge mess in the United States of America, created this horrible Obamacare, um, caused the rise of homosexual type things in the United States and increased the grotesqueness of abortion and the type types of abortions that are being performed. It says the representative of the Russian Orthodox Church has told Russian Prime Minister Vladimir Putin this week of the urgent situation Christians are facing around the world in persecution hotspots and has asked him to use his power to aid their situations. 
Then in July 29th of 2013, Putin stumps for the Orthodox Church in a film celebrating the Kievan uh, Rus anniversary. How recent documentaries show Russia's tilt towards uh, Eurocentrism and Byzantinism. Then there's another one. This one says, is Russia more Christian than the U.S.? Vladimir Putin might just say yes. This is from, uh, let's see the date on this. They don't have a specific date, but it would appear that it was sometime either in 2013 uh, or 2014. Just by this here. It says, is Russian leadership more Christian than leadership in the U.S.? Is the Russian government more Christian than George Bush or Obama ever imagined the U.S. might be? The answer to both questions is yes. And thanks to born-again Christians, Dmitry Medvedev and Vladimir Putin, Christian influence in matters of state is rapidly on the rise in Russia. Let's look at the facts. And they give you a list of facts such as in... Well, let's go up here. Reported some time ago in the New York Times is that Vladimir Putin invokes God emphatically and certainly intentionally. Putin is quoted as saying that we are all different, but when we ask for the Lord's blessings, we must not forget that God created us equal. In 2012, U.S. President Barack Obama skipped church services on Christmas Day. On January 6, 2013, Russian President Vladimir Putin attended Midnight Mass, celebrating the Russian Orthodox Christmas in St. Christ, the Savior Cathedral, in the presence of 4,000 people, including Russian Patriarch Kirill. The Russian Orthodox Church celebrates Christmas using the Julian calendar, which is 13 days behind today's Western Gregorian calendar. And I will be posting a video that has Vladimir Putin stating his beliefs in God and why church is important to him. While Russian leaders were attending church services halfway around the world, Chicago Tribune reports were writing about Obama's troubles finding a church for his family, stating, but as Obama's fellow Christians around the world attended Christmas services on Wednesday and Thursday, Obama and his family remained sequestered at their vacation compound on the windward coast of Oahu. His lack of attendance at formal religious services showcased a dilemma faced by Obama, who is between churches and often expresses concern about bringing the disruption of his security detail into the lives of others. According to the article, President Barack Obama has not attended a public church service since his election. And then it goes on to talk about prophecy. And I'm going to supply all these links. You'll want to read them. They're quite interesting, but there's not enough time in my video to read all this to you. And here's an article from the Washington Times. Who's godless now? Russia says it's U.S. Putin seizes on issue of traditional values. Russian President Putin calls the West morally bankrupt. The Washington Times reports that Russian President Putin calls the West morally bankrupt. This is from January 28, 2014. At the height of the Cold War, it was common for American conservatives to label the officially atheist Soviet Union a godless nation. More than two decades on, history has come full circle as the Kremlin and its allies in the Russian Orthodox Church hurl the same allegation at the West. And it says here, many Euro-Atlantic countries have moved away from their roots, including Christian values, Russian President Vladimir Putin said in a recent keynote speech. Policies are being pursued that place on the same level a multi-child family in a same-sex partnership a faith in God and a belief in Satan. This is the path to degradation. Now here we see one of Putin's minuses. Putin, Israel's nuclear weapons just make it a target. We know that Putin, according to what we're reading, doesn't appear to support Israel and that he has supported in times past um, Iran's nuclear program. So that would be one of his minuses. This would be one of the Asherah poles that Putin left up if you want to compare it to the kings in the Old Testament. Now, here's one I find very interesting in Salon. It says, Liberty Council's Matt Barber and the American Family Association's Brian Fisher. These two hardcore social conservatives both praised Putin for his anti-gay laws. I'm trying to move the screen over a little bit because it's cut off. 
In a December column for WND.com, Barbara wrote that during the Obama years, Putin has been able to claim for Russia the mantle of world moral leader and that Putin's anti-gay laws were an example of his being able to out-Christian our once-Christian nation. He describes the controversial laws as banning sexual anarchist propaganda. Fisher, for his part, was even more effusive in his praise for Putin, calling the Russian a lion of Christianity. Back in October, Putin, according to Fisher, is the defender of Christian values, the president that's calling his nation back to embracing its identity as a nation founded on Christian value. Fisher went on to describe Russia as more advanced spiritually than the United States. And here is the article on WND News, and this is from December the 13th, 2013. And the author discusses Obamacare, abortion, and all the terrible, perverse things that have been going on with Obama as our leader. Now, these things have always gone on, but it has gotten worse since Obama has been our leader. Now, I want to point this out here. I love this. This verse is phenomenal, and it just it says it perfectly, just like the writer states. It says, still these things are only symptomatic of a far greater problem. There remains a broader explanation, a definitive catalyst for this, the domestic winter of our discontent. And as so often happens, a mere 14 words from the Holy Scriptures better elucidates that catalyst than ream upon ream of opinion page copy. The words are these, Proverbs 29, 2, when the righteous thrive, the people rejoice, when the wicked rule, the people groan. And the people are groaning because the wicked is ruling. America is being judged. And it's only going to get worse. America groans because the wicked rule. Indeed, under this president, America's chief export has become immorality, sexual deviancy, murder of the unborn, redistribution of wealth, and other evils have been sanitized and propagandized as basic human rights. Thus, when this arrogant man stands before the UN and decries those nations that refuse to embrace his special brand of pagan relativism, we shouldn't be surprised if those nations push back. Now, I want to say that, again, I believe the anointing and protection and the covering of the Holy Spirit is fleeing this nation and headed elsewhere. I believe right now the Spirit is moving in Russia, and now I'm not trying to say that there's not people here who don't have the Holy Spirit. Please do not abuse my words and change what I'm trying to say. I'm talking about a nation as a whole. The Holy Spirit's leaving, not happy with us. We need to pray. As I stated in a recent video that I did, one of my spiritual warfare videos, we are being called to pray or revival. Quit praying for this nation to change. It's not going to. Prophecies being fulfilled. It will be fulfilled. We cannot stop prophecy from being fulfilled. We need to pray for a, a great spirit of repentance and revival to pour out upon this nation, upon the whole world, and that souls will be saved. Because as it stands now, again, there's going to be millions of people that are, are going to go to hell if they do not accept Christ as their Savior. Terrible things are happening, and it's going to get faster and faster and worse and worse. So we need to focus, quit praying that the nation is going to somehow be cured and that life is going to go on as it was in the 1980s because it's not. I can tell you that it's not. We're reaching, or we have reached a point of no return that way. We need to sincerely repent, pray for repentance and revival. Because things, as I just said, are going to happen more quickly than ever, and people need to be saved. Now look what this guy says here, and I have to agree with him. It says, under the tragic leadership of this selfie-centered narcissist, the United States will never, while never perfect, now looks less like Reagan's shining city on a hill and more like the biblical whore of Babylon, a nation that once stood alone as the world's moral guidepost now leads the compatible charge to infect our privileged planet with its own viral iniquities, and so the world pushes back. For instance, there has been of late great weeping and gnashing of teeth among mainstream media and other circles of intolerant tolerance over successful efforts 
by several foreign governments to stem the tide of LGBT propaganda within their own sovereign borders. And this is where he makes the whole point about Obama and Putin and where he makes the distinction about Putin um, being a lion of Christianity. So I will supply you with this link so you can check it out. He does add, the world has looked to America's moral leadership and found it wanting. The climate under Obama has gotten so bad, in fact, that Russian leader Vladimir Putin feels emboldened to claim for Russia the mantle of world moral leader, a proud distinction hitherto held by the good old USA. The Daily Mail reports that in his State of the Nation address, Putin sought to cast Russia as the moral arbiter of the world on Thursday as he hit out at America's non-traditional values and its influence across the world. Russia has barred LGBT and other sexual anarchist propaganda. Mr. Putin defended his government's increasingly conservative values, continued the report, and decried the review of norms of morality in the West and elsewhere. The destruction of traditional values from above not only entails negative consequences for society, but is also inherently anti-democratic because it is based on an abstract notion and runs counter to the will of the majority of people, Mr. Putin said, adding, there could be no benefit for society for treating good and evil equally. How sad that the leader of an atheist government in a country where tens of millions have died under Marxism, another of Obama's pet causes, could out Christian, our once Christian nation. Very sad. And for that, as a nation, we should weep and mourn. And we should put on our sackcloth and ashes and kneel before God in repentance and cry out for a great move of the Holy Spirit. These are our last and final hours, people. We only have a few chances left where we've spent our whole lives messing up Let's for once get it right this time. Please pray for revival. Please pray for the spirit of repentance that brings about the spirit of revival for a great anointing upon the United States of America and throughout the world before it's too late. Thank you and God bless you.